Glenn Powell's career trajectory is one of the two most common that you will see in Hollywood. Sometimes you get an actor or actress like Daniel Radcliffe who found immense success out of the gate with the Harry Potter franchise and has remained a notable actor since then. Other times you might get someone like Sylvester Stallone who had worked as an actor for more than half a decade often doing small uncredited roles before breaking out with Rocky in 1976. Glenn Powell is decidedly in the latter category and his grit is comparable to Stallone. It took Powell 13 years to finally begin gaining recognition and a further 6 years until he landed what I think is his most notable role as Hangman in 2022's Top Gun Maverick. Powell put it succinctly in an interview with Samantha Leach for Bustle, quote, Hollywood, for some people, it serves it up, Powell says. He mentions Charlize Theron getting discovered by an agent while arguing with a bank teller. It's not my path. I had to kind of fight a little longer and harder for it, end quote. And it has been a long, hard fight. Powell got a start in 2003's Spy Kids 3D Game Over, which makes the comparison to Stallone apt as Stallone was also in that movie. In it, he was credited as Long Fingered Boy, which frankly is a decent encapsulation of his career for roughly 10 years. Both on the TV side and movie side, Powell would often play small roles that didn't have much screen time or would only be on an episode or two. That was the case for 2005's The Wendell Baker Story, 2006's Fast Food Nation, the first of four times so far he would work with the Richard Linklater, 2007's The Great Debaters, where, after a talk with Denzel Washington, he decided to move to LA to pursue a career in acting, and 2009's The Hottest Star. He then had three movies in 2012, one of which was The Dark Knight Rises, where he was credited as traitor number one. All of this is to say that acting, even when GQ describes you as having, quote, old world looks, new school charm, end quote, is hard for anyone, even someone as traditionally handsome and, by all accounts, as decent of a person as Glenn Powell is. That goes double when you're trying to break in from outside of Hollywood, as Powell, who was born in Austin, Texas, did. But something else that Powell proves is that working hard can eventually pay off, even if that payoff is a decade removed from when you began. Because in 2013, 10 years after Spy Kids, he landed his first starring role in a movie. It was Red Wing, a western that didn't set the world on fire, but did help Powell move up the rung a bit. In 2014, he was in Expendables 3, but in 2015, he landed perhaps his second most important role up until that point as the main lead in Fox's Scream Queens. The first season got mixed reviews, while the second season got positive reviews, but they represented a stable gig for Powell, which is always nice to have. In 2016, he started moving up quickly. This is something people might notice in their own lives. As you work towards a goal, the initial slog is slow, grueling, and demoralizing. But when things start to pick up, they can have a snowball effect. 2016 had two of his most important releases. Richard Linklater's Everybody Wants Him, his critically successful second collaboration with the director, and Hidden Figures, a critical and commercial success where he played astronaut John Glenn. In 2018, he was in the critically successful films The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and set it up, the latter of which he was a co-lead. The same year, he would land the role that would make him a star. Top Gun Maverick, where he plays Lieutenant Jake Hangman Searson. The movie was a massive critical and commercial success, and while Tom Cruise and Miles Teller are the ostensible leads, Powell left his mark as one of the most memorable characters in the movie. The same year, he was in Devotion, which was about a friendship between naval officers Tom Hudner and Jesse Brown during the Korean War, as well as Apollo 10 and a half. A Space Childhood, an animated comedy film that's loosely based on Richard Linklater's own life. This marked his third collaboration with Linklater. In 2023, he was in Hitman, which he co-wrote with Richard Linklater. The movie, like pretty much all of Linklater's films, was a critical success, further entrenching the director as one of the best working today. It also showed that Powell was a man of many talents. Powell, who also interned at a production studio, was probably able to put his script reading chops to the work here. One thing that's evident since 2016's Everybody Wants Some is that almost all of them are well written and well received. Powell knows how to pick winners and Hitman was another winner. He's finishing off 2023 and Anyone But You alongside Sidney Sweeney will be in the sequel to 1996's Twister, creatively titled Twisters in 2024, and is working on Most Dangerous Game, which isn't an adaptation of the short story about men hunting other men, but a rom-com where he's reunited with Set It Up co-star Zoe Deutsch and writer Katie Silberman. 2003 to 2013 were Powell's most grueling years. 
when he was putting in his deuce. Between 2013 and 2018, his profile began to rise quicker and he started getting media roles. In 2022 and 2023, 20 years after he started, he had hit the big time. I don't know what the future has in store for Glenn Powell, but I'm sure he'll do well. He has all the makings of a leading man, which are in short supply nowadays, and he has proven himself to be a decent actor. Just 35, I think we can all expect a long, solid career from him.